On the 7th of June of 2021, I did an orchid transition together with Trisha's Orchids and Plant Life of a Phalaenopsis from Bark into Lekka. So I'm going to link my original video and the original video from Trish in the description below of the transition that we did back on the 7th of June. And here we are today to update you on how the progress is going. What you're seeing right now on the screen is how Falnube, as I call her for short, she is in actual fact the Phalaenopsis with the longest name in the history of YouTube. We call her Nube for short, but that is what she looked like at the end of the video. I left the spikes intact and let the orchid do what she wanted to do with the blooms and with the spikes, depending on her own personal needs, absorb them or not. The first spike was absorbed relatively quickly. Within a week, 10 days, approximately, the blooms dropped, the spike was completely absorbed, and only then did I cut it away. The second spike took a lot longer to get absorbed, and this is what we're left with right now on the 29th of July. She has completely absorbed the spike. The blooms have dropped. I did not interfere with anything and she's growing a new leaf. So let's go in a little bit closer. I would say her new leaf is looking marvelous, looking strong. Her other leaves started to flop only recently. And you can see a root sticking out there. But on the 15th of July, I took these two pictures because it was about a week after I saw root nubbins growing. So I took the pictures as a reference for when we were going to do an update. And you can see that within three weeks, she started growing new roots and seems to be doing really well. I have also added my microfiber here just to keep the root that is right on the surface there a little bit more hydrated. Let's go in even closer. There we are. So these are the two roots that we saw in the images. And here is the microfiber keeping everything a little bit more humid. Working really well because if I can gently remove the top of it, you can see how it's hydrating and extending now beyond that nubbin that had dried out right there when we were transitioning her. So the microfiber has done its job and the root is extending nicely and going into the pot. There's another new little root coming out right in the back here. That is also very, very positive and it looks like it's going to go down as well with no issues. These two roots here I have left a little bit more exposed and I will be removing the leka from the tip of that root right there just to encourage it to go down before I fill up that space with leka. First, I wanted them to go down, searching out the humidity. Let's turn her around very, very slowly. She's of course not pot down, and she's still really, really rigged up. And that is okay for now, and it'll probably be like that for the next six to eight months. Now, here's the root that we see from the photo before. It's extending nicely. And there's another one tucked in right back there, which is new. And this one's coming along beautifully as well. I do miss this edge a little bit every single day, at least once, if not twice a day. So this orchid had little mealybug issues. And you see that I've still got some tucked away in there, which we will take care of right now. I have her in my dining room on the shelf right by the glass so that she gets plenty of light but no direct sun. This is the most direct sun that she's had since the transition, but a lot, a lot of light to encourage all the growth and the activity for the roots. No direct sun. Don't want to risk burning or stressing the orchid by too much light, which can be a factor. I want to show you why I was so confident with regards to Phalaenopsis nube, with the transition video code cracked, so to speak, because what you're going to see now is exactly the transition of Bubblicious from a year ago. And I based everything I managed to do with Bubblicious on what I did here with nube. So let's have a look at Bubblicious as well. 
And to the left now, you see Bubblicious. She was the prototype that from here on in, with regards to transitioning from bark into lacquer, gave me the realization that I've cracked the code and there should not be any more foul losses in the future if I follow my own five steps as per the video from Fal Nube there. She is doing very, very well. I had her bloom beautifully. I cut the spike because there was signs of scale on the blooms and that was astounding scale on blooms but that's fine there is no scale on the orchid itself which last year i had two orchids taken out because of scale within the leaf joints and i didn't see them in time and they had done a lot of damage before i recognized it and by that time it was too late so the orchid is clear of scale because i use alcohol and garlic and i literally paint the structures top and underside with the garlic alcohol. That's the only way I can think of to keep them protected without spraying and ruining the roots and development on the surface. So every 10 days, my Phalaenopsis get painted with garlic and alcohol. What I didn't realize is that the beasts are so, so stubborn and want to get out my fowls, they took to my blooms instead. We're at the end of July, that's fine. I had a beautiful show of the big lipped pink fowl blooms and it was time anyway, either for her to start a new leaf and get a move on with more growing points, which would be nice. And you can see she has not started a new leaf. In fact, she has not even actively started growing any more new roots. So all these are from last year, no active root tips, but she is pot bound from last year. So. I left the spike on a little bit longer than I normally would, simply because either she can absorb this or I will get a branch. The orchid is healthy enough for me to let her branch out if she wants to make another branch here for bloom. But I would like to see now some active growth because time is running out for me. Let's just say in my climate here, I have now got to the end of July. Bubblicious has not started with any new growth, new leaves, new roots. So I have the months of August, September, maybe October. That's only three months for me to get two new leaves to grow so that there's another node for blooming for next year because it is not necessarily how low does your temperature drop in order for the Phalaenopsis to get triggered to spike. <laughs> it is a temperature drop. So if I'm at 30 degrees Celsius now for the next two months, when my temperatures drop to 25 or 20, which could happen relatively quickly in October, then I don't have much time for structure growth. So usually I get a beautiful large leaf followed by a little bit more smaller leaf because by that time the orchid is spiking and she stops with the leaf growth and focuses on the spike. Babalicious was a little different. Her leaf continued to grow even while she was spiking. So the vigor of this orchid is fantastic. I'm expecting exactly the same with Nuba here. So Babalicious there was my final and last piece of the puzzle to crack the code for transitioning from bark into leka without failing. And my biggest, biggest factor from that video is temperature. If you cannot wait for the roots because the media is too far gone, the temperature, the ambient air is fundamental for success to transition from bark into leka. That was the last little piece of the puzzle I needed to make this a guaranteed success. And Falnuve is proving that I have managed to crack it. And I'm so pleased, really, really pleased. The only thing now is, sorry for that jiggle, is to make sure that no more scale get to her and no more mealy bugs. And now for the last and final part, hurrah! I also consider this a step, it always makes me very, very happy to be able to do this, is to get rid of a hideous steak. <laughs> I don't like staking my spikes, no way. So that's gone, woohoo! and we can get rid of this unsightly spike. And I go down as far as possible, seeing as I don't need it anymore. I have my own stake in the pot right here because it is already attached to an old spike that I left there to help me out. So it is secure, and this is only to avoid her from leaning her way out of the pot too quickly. 
And we can also get rid of this, making it all look a lot more pleasant and attractive. Yes, I prefer that a lot. If you haven't left yet, thank you. <laughs> I thought while I was outside with her, I can give her that bi-weekly flush that I'm doing now. Apart from the misting, every three days, a good flush. Might as well take advantage of while we're here. <laughs> and despite all that flushing, she still has fertilized water in the pot. This is 300 parts per million right now. The roots in the pot are active. There has been no decline. And for that reason, fertilized water every three days, a flush. There we have them, both of them. We've got candidate A from 2020, when I finally figured it out, and Nuve here, 2021. Proof in the pudding. By Jove, I got it. <laughs> this is the update. I hope that it was of interest to you. All the links will be in the description below from all the videos, Trisha's Orchids and Plant Life and myself. And of course, Trisha's Orchid and Plant Life video of the day. Her update will also be in the description. I appreciate your time. Thank you so much for watching. Have yourselves a wonderful day and please, please stay safe. Take care. Bye.